Welcome into another edition of the MVFC First and Gold podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Burke. And in anticipation for the start of conference play, I'm excited to welcome in USD assistant coach Bill O'Boyle. Now, Coach O'Boyle is uh, the offensive line coach, and he's also the run game coordinator for the Coyotes. Coach, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Kelly. You know, you guys are coming off a huge win over North Dakota last weekend. You know, the USD football program, it's ranked as high as it's ever been. Where do you feel like the Coyote team has improved the most and why? Uh, you know, really, I just think we're starting to come together a little bit. Last year, we got, uh, obviously, we got here late in the spring with the recruiting process and went through a rough spring ball, just kind of installed some things. And uh, last year, really, to be honest with you, we were kind of in that, that entry-level phase where we were putting things together. And it started to come together toward the end of the season. And... Uh, had a good spring, and uh, kids are buying into what we're doing. Uh, I think we're a lot stronger in the weight room, which was a big improvement. And uh, we're getting the right kids in here. Not that Coach Glenn didn't do a great job recruiting, but uh, kind of the kids that are, fit our style. Yeah. You know, you when you were at SIU, you were the, the co-offensive coordinator. You know, now you're the run game coordinator. And you, you work directly, obviously, with Coach Lofke, um, putting together a game plan. So if you could elaborate a little bit just on, you know, what that dynamic is like, how you guys are working together to game plan, you know, who's essentially calling the plays in game, um, and, and what specifically your role is, not only leading up to the game and game week, but, you know, on, on actual game day. Well, I think uh, it was a lot like similar situation with Coach Hill. Uh, when I was at Southern, uh, both those guys are great quarterback coaches, great throwing game coordinators, and really overall coordinators. Uh, my role is, is basically is is just with the protections, uh, with the run game, what we're doing to simplify things, and and uh, you know to come kind of basically come up with a game plan that uh, we don't have to change a lot of things up front, uh, keep the same rules if possible, and adjust to what we're seeing that week and. Ted does a great job of breaking down film. You know, I've been around a lot of guys, but he is uh, he's a guy that will stay up here all night and just watch game after game after game uh, of uh, the opponents and, and does a great job with that. So, you know, really, uh, it, it's kind of like you're a consultant. You know, you go in and, and this is what we can do, and and uh, they have the game plan in mind, just like Nick did. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm just kind of, hey, uh, this is what we can do and this is what we can't do. Yeah. And it works from there. Ted calls all the plays, just like Nick did. And uh, you know, I've kind of moved back from that. And and, uh, and that's where I want to be. You know, I want to be with the offensive line, especially coming into league play uh, with the kids we play against uh, week in and week out. It's, it's, it's something where you have to devote a little bit more time to those guys up front. You know, speaking of the offensive line, you know, the, the unit's much improved. Uh, you know, I know in the, the win over North Dakota, um, your starting left tackle, Nick, Jensen, who's one of the leaders of the unit, you know, went down in that game. So when you are having to adjust on the fly in that situation, you know, moving guys, I think you moved your uh, freshman center to, to Nick's position. You know, what is that like adjusting on the fly in game? And then how many of your guys are capable of playing multiple positions? Uh, I've always had the philosophy, really, you play pretty much your best five kids. And they fit in places where they, you know, you normally, just like last year with Nile Banks, was it was a great offensive guard, uh, but we didn't have a center, so he was the best center we had. Uh, so we end up moving him there, and it was kind of a situation this week. You know, we I I did best thing about uh, Mason Scheidegger, uh, the kid that moved in that was our center, moved the left tackle, is he came in as a tackle uh, from uh, as a freshman, so he had some tackle experience. Throughout the week, you always game plan during the week. I know Coach Nielsen's all, always on me because I don't replace a lot of guys in practice because you want those five playing together as much as they can. But uh, to the point where we, we did put him in in some reps, so I've always had him in there and, and moved Tyler Shure, our new center, our true freshman center, uh, in and let him take some snaps and moved uh, Mason out and let him take some left tackle snaps. So, you know, you have a lot of parts, and, and now we have a whole new plan. You know, if, if somebody else goes down, then – you know, what we're going to be able to do. And you might move two positions, you know, to get your best five out there. So uh, the best thing about our offense is is all those guys know the position. You know, it isn't that complicated where they, you know, are lost with uh, with uh, somebody else coming in. Yeah, that, so, ma 
That makes sense. You know, as an offensive line coach and run game coordinator, what is it like having a quarterback like Chris Strebler, who's always a dual threat? You know, it's amazing what he does. I, I just got off the phone with a, a guy that I coached with for over 20 years. Uh, it was a D coordinator that uh, – it reminds me a lot of uh, when I was at Shatterin with Danny Woodhead. Uh, I mean, you, it makes everybody look good on offense. Yeah. I mean, he can do some things uh, just like this past week. Uh, we didn't block a power up right and let a few guys go. But, uh, you know, nobody knows that until you watch the film. Uh, but he is uh, he's, he's a special kid. He can do a lot of things. Great leader. Uh, by far the best athlete on our team. And uh, he's a guy we got to keep healthy, so he's a special kid. When you watch him sometimes, um, does he remind you? I mean, when I watch him, he reminds me of, of a tailback, just the way, you know, he will, he's not afraid to lower his shoulder and take a hit. And so is there times when you're watching him in game and think, you know, you, you forget he's your quarterback almost? Several times, and, you know, and, and he's reminded by Coach Slavke to get down, get out of bounds. You know, and that's that's just not his personality. You know, he's a competitor. He's going to get that extra yard to the point where it, where he has to start being smarter and, and uh, you know taking care of himself. Because uh, I talked to him yesterday in the weight room, and he uh, he feels better than he's ever had at this point. Uh, a lot better than he did last year at this point. You know, and we're we're doing our best to keep the hits off him. Uh, but he's he's a guy that's uh, going to compete. You know, and that, that's what makes him a great player. You guys open uh, Valley play coming up against uh, your alma mater, Western Illinois, and you're a former offensive guard for the Leathernecks and had a, had a career-ending injury. Um, I believe it was your sophomore season. And so, you know, how did that change just your outlook on football? And, you know, did it influence you getting into coaching? Oh, I think it definitely did. I, I come from a football family, a long line of coaches, and, and uh, you know, uh, I, it was something that I wanted to do, and uh, after that happened, I didn't want anything to do with football. Matter of fact, I was heading home. If I, it was my choice. Really? And, yeah. Thank God, my mom said, "You come home, you got two weeks, and you're not here no more." <laughs> so, uh, it kind of scared me into staying, and uh, you know, I made a decision to get around and, and be around football as much as I could. Thank God, uh, Coach Crad was there, and, and Coach Ball, and, and all the great coaches that were at Western at that time. And uh, kind of accepted me and brought me in and kept me involved. Uh, let me take the tight ends, and uh, you know, and uh, basically taught me a lot. You know, during that time when uh, when I couldn't play, so you know, it was kind of a blessing. And my mom said, "You come home, you're not staying home." So <laughs> thank God she said that. Yeah, you know, you've coached at, at different levels, um, but have had several stints now in the Valley. What is it about the Missouri Valley Football Conference that you know, keeps you coming back? Uh, I think it's a great level of competition. I mean, uh, week in and week out, when you look at our schedule and, and the non-conference games are always competitive, uh, but they don't compare to, uh, you know, what we're going to see these next eight games. Uh, I mean, week in and week out, I mean, you're, you're playing some of the best in the nation. You know, and that's, that's what keeps you going, and that's what, you know, when you talk about game planning and things like that, even with, with Nick at, at Southern, Coach Hill, and, Coach Slavky here, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a special deal to get in there and keeps you, uh, keeps you going, you know, every Sunday and Monday to, to see what you can do against the best in the nation, yeah. you know, and, and uh, this level is uh, from what North Dakota State has done, Youngstown, South Dakota State, all of them, uh, you know, it's, it's, we've made an unbelievable mark you know, in FCS football and it's going to continue. Yeah, I mean, it really seems like the league is just getting better and better, you know, there's no drop off. No, and again, I, I even uh, Missouri State's going to be back. I mean, he's going he's doing some good things recruiting wise, and uh, you're you're seeing all of them. I mean, again, you can't take a blow uh, every week. Uh, you better have your your game plan ready and and your kids ready. Or uh, again, you're going to take a loss. So it's extremely competitive, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you and the team. You know, you see a much different side of, of Coach Bob Nielsen than the average fan, you know, people in the media, even even people like myself who are working the games. So from an in-game standpoint, you know, I always joke um, because I talk to Coach Nielsen sometimes 
you know, before the game, and it's much different, obviously, than in the game during a halftime interview. You know, it's it's no secret halftime interviews are not his uh, favorite thing. And um, I joke that sometimes uh, he reminds me of like a Greg Popovich just because he he'll do the interview. He just he doesn't particularly like doing the interview, which I, which I think is normal for coaches in general. Um, but what is what is Coach Nielsen like off the field? you know, um, from a, from a human side, just the, the aspect that the average person doesn't necessarily get to see. You know, I, and Kelly, I was the same way. I mean, I played him in the playoffs when I was head coach in division two. And, you know, I come in and, you know, I'm, I'm not one to really dress up or anything. And, you know, this guy, every meeting, he's got a shirt and tie on and everything else, very stoic, uh, you know, and it was, it was different. And really, I didn't even know coach, uh, before, uh, uh, just from from those experiences, but you know, when when the job opportunity came up and he called me, I didn't know him at all, you know. So, uh, and I'm new to this staff, and he retained most of about 95 percent of his staff from Western, and and uh, but you know, he he's uh, I guess what you see is what you get. I mean, we, you know, of course he loosens up quite a bit when we're in the office and things like that, but extremely professional, uh, you know, very organized. You know, I couldn't ask for work for a better better guy right now. And, you know, he, he's, I would say, unfortunately, but he's an offensive line guy, too. And uh, he's coached the offensive line, a great offensive line coach. So, you know, in, in a way, it's good to have a guy, you know, that's with you. And if you notice on the sideline, he's always hanging around, you know, when I have the offensive lineman over there and, and uh, coming up with ideas. And, and uh, Bob knows the game, you know, and he's a very good coach. So it's a great opportunity to be here. But. Uh, he does come across as kind of a, of a, of a stern guy, you know, but, uh, you know, really I've, I've had some great experiences since I've been here with him. Yeah. And I mean, I, and I certainly have too. And so I think it's just, you know, it's that game mentality you get in that zone and, you know, that's really, you have to keep that perspective, you know, when you're, when you're doing an interview. Well, and it's in a way it's, it's what makes him a great coach because if you notice him on the sideline, he might get after a few officials every once in a while, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he keeps that even keel the whole time, and, and you have to, you know, and that's that's uh, that's a great thing as a head coach that you can uh, keep that attitude and, you know, not let things overwhelm you and, and uh, you know, be able to make the right call. So yeah. he does a great job. Yeah, and it, last year it was fun. Uh, his grandkids, you know, were at one of the games I worked, and so it's fun to to see him after where you guys were, you had a big win when we did your game, and to see him interacting with his grandkids. Yeah, I think he's, he's got a great family. His wife's unbelievable. I mean, she comes up and uh, on Sunday evenings, and we're in here late, and they'll bring supper for us. And and uh, they, uh, you know, they're just great people to be around. My conversation with Coach O'Boyle continues shortly, but if you're enjoying this edition of the MBFC First and Gold podcast, check out all the lineup media group offerings featuring your favorite sports and non-sports podcasts too. Now back to the show. Coach, who were some, you know, influential coaches throughout your career, um, and, and why do you consider them, you know, mentors? Wow. You know, I've had so many. Uh, you know, I, I look back at high school. I uh, had a guy named Jim Fox who was a great coach. He came in my junior in high school. He ended up going to the University of Iowa. He only spent one year there in East High, and, uh, and he kind of changed things for me, moved me to offensive line, which I hated. But, uh, you know, it was uh, a good move, great move. I would never went on a couple eight college ball without it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so he was obviously had some great coaches uh, there with him, uh, Walt Kennedy, some, just some good people to be around. And then uh, I ended up um, going to Western Illinois, and, and Coach Mortier is an excellent coach. Coach Rodriguez recruited me, uh, spent a half a semester with him, and then uh, Coach Crad came in. Coach Craddock was hired my uh, – uh, in December of my true freshman year, you know, and kind of changed the whole uh, landscape of Western Illinois when he came in. Yeah. In, in a great way, you know, unbelievable coach, brought in a phenomenal staff, Coach Ball, Coach Wilt, you know, Coach Williams, and there's so many guys. Coach Dodd, I worked with him when I coached the Western Illinois. Uh, phenomenal football mind, uh, game plan guy, offense, uh, unbelievable. Uh, he's at Lamar right now as offense coordinator. He's been around a lot of places, but you know, in this profession, you just get to meet a lot of good people, you know, and uh, you get a lot of great ideas. You know, it kind of shapes how you coach. You know, you take the good and the bad, and, you know, unfortunately, I've uh, I've uh, had some great people to work under and, and play in. You know, Coach Ball was my offensive line coach, and 
that guy's as good as they get, you know. So, uh, Randy Ball, now he's with the Chiefs and, hmm. and did a great job there. So, yeah. I've been around some good people. So, what position before they moved you to offensive line in high school? What were you playing? Yeah, I was more of a skilled guy. You know, I was, uh, man, I played everything. Uh, I was a fullback, I was a tight end, I was, a, you know, even younger, I was a, uh, when I was thinner, I was, I was a wide out, you know, and, uh, you know, I moved around quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, my dad was a little All-American coach, you know, and, and moved me to uh, D-line, so I played some D-ins and things like that. So, uh, but Coach uh, Coach Fox moved me inside. Matter of fact, I think I was Italian. I can't hardly remember, but I played <laughs> back land guard and uh, kind of shaped the way, uh, you know, from then on out what I was going to do. Yeah. You once won 28 consecutive conference games when you were a head coach. And, you know, that's an incredible feat in itself. Um, if you put that in, in a conference like the Missouri Valley, you know, it, it would probably be impossible to, to accomplish that again. Um, but what stands out about that, that period of time? It was just like a perfect storm. You know, I, I, when I took the job over, I mean, we had to make some changes at Shattered State and uh, just in personnel and what we were doing and we did. And, you know, and really, when you look at that stuff, my name's on it. But uh, you know, I Todd Hour was my D coordinator, and, and uh, you know, I, I just had some unbelievable uh, staff that was there. You know, we were all on the same page. We all wanted the same thing. Uh, and then, you know, fortunately, we had a, a number three that was uh, Danny Woodhead, uh, that was really an FBS back that we ended up getting at Shattered State, and uh, you know, he kind of changed things for us. I mean, we could beat anybody. We had a big signature win right off the bat. We beat uh, Montana State, who just knocked off Colorado the week before, and we came off a four-game, uh, a four-game season. That was our second game of the season, and we won and kind of changed everything. It's a great group of kids, you know. That that not only you know, of course, our running back. But we had a quarterback that was 43 and four as a starter. You know, all five, seven of them, and uh, you know, so we, we had some great competitors. You know, so I was fortunate, you know, to be in that situation and great support staff. And, and uh, you know, again, it was to me, I look back and all that stuff. It was it was all the staff and all the kids we had. You know, I was just part of it. And it was a great ride you know, while we had it. So. Do you still keep in touch with Danny? No, not much. You know, not hardly at all. You mm-hmm. know, and again, uh, that's you know, I know he's got his life and everything else. And, and he's gone on, done some unbelievable things, obviously. And uh, but I, I stay in touch with. Uh, I don't think there's a week goes by or a day goes by that I don't hear from, you know, either a player or, uh, you know, of course Todd Hours, one of my best friends, talk to him about every day. Yeah. So uh, you know we uh, we all stay fairly close. That old staff. Well, speaking of Coach Hour, you know when you were at SIU, you and him used to to really get after it in the weight room. So I, I wonder now that you're in Vermilion, uh, has. Uh, that tradition continued with the, the current staff, and are you, I mean, are you are you uh, outdoing uh, some of the players in the weight room? No, nah, I don't. I wouldn't say that. I mean, you know, I'm I'm pretty much a lone coyote. You know, I go in there, but <laughs> uh, our staff really gets after it, though. And all those guys work out. You know, they all stay in great shape. And you know, I, I think in this profession, and, I, and it's been fortunate when you talk about Coach Nielsen and, and even Nick at uh, Nick at Southern. I mean. You know, those guys encourage it. Coach Ball did when I was at Western under him. Uh, those guys encourage you, hey, an hour, hour and a half a day, get out and do something. I think you have to. You know, it's a huge stress relief, uh, you know, and it's hard to make time during the season. I understand that. But I think that's uh, something you have to do, you know, in our profession. You better be doing something that's going to eat you alive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough. And, of course, Todd was a year behind me at Western, you know, so we came up under uh, – Coach Bill Wiltz, uh, our strength coach, who was a, the, the ultimate grinder. And uh, so we, uh, you know, I'd probably learn more from him than I did anything, anybody. You know, so, uh, you know, we, we continued that when we were at Shattering together and, and at Southern together. I, I miss him to death right now. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's great stress relief, you know, and we've got some strong kids here, so I'm getting old. So. <laughs> it's uh, Again, it's it's good to get in there. We got a great facility here too. When you were in Carbondale, you had a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Uh, do you still have it? And uh, if so, how is how is the riding in South Dakota? 
I tell you what, Shad and Shad or Black Diamond hooked me up uh, and uh, convinced me to trade my other one in and get a nice bike. So it's 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 beautiful. I mean, I ride. I live about 15 miles from work in a little town about 400 people. So uh, I'm right on uh, Highway 50. So it's a great drive every morning. A little cold, a little bit different in Southern Illinois. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't get the uh, the year-round riding time uh, that I did down there, but it's. Uh, you know, it's getting that point where I'll probably I'm riding as much as I can just to, you know, to get it in because I'm gonna be putting it away here for about six months. Yeah. So, you know, it's yeah, but it's enjoyable. You know, it's kind of a stress relief to get out. I'm not a hardcore. I'm I'm again I'm I'm just a partial guy on that. So it's nice to have a bike, and, uh, and I'm happy I do. You have six brothers, and so. I believe six brothers, um, you know, and I believe almost all of them are involved in, in football in some way. How competitive was it in your house growing up? And uh, what are the what are the dinner tables look like on a nightly basis? It was it was extremely competitive. I don't think I don't think you could ever, uh, you know, put it in words, to be honest with you. Uh, I have five older brothers. Okay. I'm young, six. And uh, the oldest one is about 13 and a half years older than me. So when I went into kindergarten, Mike left. And went to, and the first four all played at Southern Illinois, and then Tom came up here and played. He was a receiver up here, and then I went to Western. Okay. Uh, very competitive. I, I think the way my dad structured things, uh, you know, it, it was everything was structured to be competitive, and uh, that, that was kind of how it was. I know with our, with our, uh, all the way down to our uh, sports teams, our football team, and and Major League Baseball. I mean, we had to pick a team by the by the time we were seven. And none of us could have the same team and you have <laughs> the rest of your life. You know, so, uh, you know, he made things competitive and a great dad and great mom and great atmosphere to grow up in. Yeah. Extremely competitive. I'm sure. Is it still competitive? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, five or four of them came out uh, right before the season. And uh, we got a real nice pit out here we could go fish on. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, just about had to pull the boat over a couple of times. A couple of guys <laughs> throw down. So. I, don't, I think it's always going to stay in that uh, that mode. So it's uh, it's interesting to be around those guys. Yeah. You know, and they are all. You know, and when you talk about role models, and especially coaching, you know, uh, three of them are excellent coaches and have been uh, great high school coaches. So I grew up watching that. So it's good to see. Yeah. You were a physical education and studio art major in college. So do you have artistic talents? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I call them. Uh, that artistic, but uh, yeah, you know, I enjoy art. I was going to major in art, and uh, you know, it's it's something I enjoy to do. I wish I had more time to do it. Um, my art table is still laying in my garage, not put together. Um, and hopefully, after the season, I can get back and do some things. But yeah, I, I enjoy it. I really enjoy doing things like that, and a little bit different. You know, uh, my daughter is extremely talented, uh, so I get to you know kind of live through her right now. And she's doing a lot of work and some stuff like that. So it's, it's good to critique her stuff. And, and uh, you know, uh, it's a great talent to have. I just wish I had time to do it more. Yeah. You know, you mentioned your daughter and growing up in a, a family of all boys, uh, you know, being around guys all the time, essentially, with the football team. Uh, what was it like to, to have a daughter? It's like it, totally it you know, my ex-wife did a phenomenal job with her. And, uh, you know, she was... Uh, around her all the time, obviously when we we're, were working with football and things like that. But uh, uh, she uh, and she she grew up, uh, you know, uh, a little bit kind of a tomboyish, and uh, continues to be that way. So uh, again, it was, and again, I, I credit my ex-wife completely. Susan she did a phenomenal job, you know, with with uh, Cassie, you know, her growing up. So uh, she's doing extremely well now, and and. Uh, Hoping to see her soon here in a couple of home games. Nice. You know, I'm curious to get your take. The The game has changed so much uh, since you played it in college, um, and, and there's a much greater emphasis now on, on things like targeting in games, um, replay. And so from a coach's perspective, and, and I don't mean this question in any way to be controversial, um, but what is it like to see how the game has evolved and, you know, what, it, what is now emphasized? It, it, obviously, it's safer than what it used to be, you know. And, and it, back then, when we played, you know, yeah, 
I don't know. I, I didn't really think about it that much. You know, you, you never, you know, I, I, they were probably there, but you didn't notice the injuries. You didn't notice the, the, the things that are going on now that, that are, they kind of blow up, you know. So I think it's always been there. Uh, I think the safety part now has kind of taken over and made some changes, obviously, in what we do and what we do in preseason camp and everything else, which is a good thing. You know, there's no doubt. And uh, the equipment is so much better than what it was back then. You know, I, I think the safety part is, is plays right into that. Um, you know, it's, it's a better game now. You know, I know people knock on it and this and that. And, you know, obviously with the, with the, with the replay and things like that, uh, you don't want to get the controversy of, of bad calls and, well, this happened and that. I mean, I, I think it's a good thing. You know, I, I like that. And, uh, of course, it slows the game down a little bit. But, uh, you know, with what we're doing tempo-wise, we need a blow every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> good thing. Well, Coach, uh, I, I told you I would keep it uh, uh, right at about 30 minutes. So is there anything else that I haven't asked you um, that you would want to share or let people know just about the, the Coyotes program or, or yourself or your background? No, not really. I, you know, again, I appreciate you having me. I'm a little bit shocked. You know, the uh, <laughs> line coach would be that uh, they are, they're going to get interviewed on anything. So besides a blown protection or something. But, <laughs> Uh, no, it's 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 great to be on the show and appreciate you and all you've done, especially when we we're there at Southern and and it's a great league. You know, I'm, I'm honored to be in this league and honored to be part of the staff. So good thing. Well, I I greatly appreciate you you making the time, especially uh, on your bye week. And uh, we actually have your guys' uh, Valley opener here in about a week and a half. So look forward uh, to seeing you guys then uh, in Macomb. All right, thanks, Kelly. Appreciate it. If you like what you heard from Bill O'Boyle and our MVFC First and Gold podcast, take a moment and subscribe. Lineupmedia.fm also is home to many other podcasts, shows like Not So Fast, Coach Your Brains Out, and Bleacher Bums. You can also find us on iTunes and Stitcher.